Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by, come on now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I'm talking football, man. College football. It can't get here soon enough. It's already here. We had some games this past weekend. Didn't have a chance to jump on and talk about it. Had a lot of stuff going on. I try to avoid at times jumping on this a little bit too early because it's the first game of the season. Florida State football is in trouble this year. What a difference a year makes, a quarterback makes. Mike Norvell has himself an issue. But before we jump into that, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and ring that bell. And share this video. We are not just going to rant about the WNBA. College football is here, baby. It's here. So let's go. Florida State loses their season opener 24-21 to Georgia Tech on a last-second field goal. And what do I have? Oh, by the way, I went to Florida State for a year and a half. I was never an FSU fan. It was the furthest from home to go inside of Florida. I had a good time while I was there. It was a great experience. But I was born and raised a Miami Hurricanes fan. Even though I didn't go to Miami, I'm from Miami, grew up a cane, and I love the Hurricanes. Now, has that been in my best interest since 2005? Probably not, because FSU has won a national championship in that time frame. And Miami has not won an ACC championship in that same time frame. All that said, FSU was 13-0 last year. with Jordan Travis at quarterback. I actually really like that kid. I thought FSU would win the national championship last year. And you may want to go back and say, I'm crazy. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. FSU was awesome last year. Jordan Travis was fabulous last year. They were loaded last year. And they were undefeated last year and got royally fucked out of the college football playoff last year. Then half their team decides we're not going to play in the bowl game, the Orange Bowl, and Georgia beats them 63-2-3. I went to the game. My wife is an FSU graduate. Bought the tickets before everyone opted out of playing. Still a fun experience going to the game, but that was an absolute massacre. But that wasn't the Florida State football team that played last season. That was some other squad because all their starters had left. FSU was winning games on defense at the end of the season, especially after Jordan uh, Travis got hurt, which is the excuse that was made and why they didn't get into the college football playoff, which was absolutely preposterous at the time. And I still believe that. And I don't think we really ever saw the best four. Because Alabama wasn't better than Florida State, in my opinion. Washington wasn't better than Florida State, in my opinion. That was my opinion. Texas wasn't better than Florida State, in my opinion. Florida State's defense at the end of last season was absolutely dominant. Despite the issues at quarterback because of Travis's injury. If FSU was going to the playoff, if he was healthy, why the hell does he not go? They do not go to the playoff because he's hurt. Is this a, 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 a decision based on health and non health despite going undefeated? But thankfully, that's all been resolved. And we have a 12 team playoff this year. And we'll get to find out really who the best truly is and not just a big ass SEC tournament, which is what we seem to get or what they've always wanted to produce every single year. Finally, last year, we had four separate conferences that were in the actual playoff, except SEC didn't belong. Florida State belonged. 
But last year to this year is another story. Mike Norvell made a decision last year that I completely disagree with. He decided rather than running with his freshman quarterback who started in the Orange Bowl, Brock Glenn, he decided he's going to go poach DJ Uyunglele out of Oregon State. For those of you that don't remember, DJ Uyunglele was the quarterback at Clemson after Trevor Lawrence. He's not very good. Not very good. He was very highly recruited and touted out of um, Bosco in California, in Bellflower, California. Top shelf program they have there. But DJ, DJ Uyunglele is not the guy who people, who Clemson, who Dabo Sweeney hoped would be the guy that he was at Bosco. End of the day, he was a massive underperformer. It went from Trevor Lawrence to him, and he absolutely bluntly fucking sucked. And I get from my many friends who are Florida State graduates who went to Florida State, who are massive Florida State fans, it's just one game. They were double-digit favorites over a bad Georgia Tech team. And they lost to a bad Georgia Tech team. Let's recap on what DJ Uyi Ungalale was at Clemson. He, in his first year, he played a few games, went 78 for 117, completed almost 67% of his passes for 914 yards. That is when uh, Tre Trevor Lawrence was still there. Five touchdowns. Did a good job that year. That year, he did a good job. 2001, he's the starter. He takes them to a game against Georgia, and they lose the opener, 10-3. They can't score. He can't complete passes. He goes 187 for 342. He completes under 55% of his passes for 2,059 yards. Nine touchdowns and nine picks. This was your starting quarterback at Clemson. He was flat out terrible on a loaded ass Clemson team. Lost to Georgia, NC State, and Pitt. They finished 10 and 3. Nobody cared. This was a team that was going to the national championship every year or to the, the final four playoff. He stunk. Best game all year. Threw for 241 yards against Connecticut. So he stunk. And they knew it. So what happens a year later? He's the quarterback again. But he ain't the guy, and you can tell. He got benched in the ACC Championship versus North Carolina for Cade Klubnik. And literally within a couple of days, he announces he's entering the transfer portal. Let's go look at his numbers that year in 2022. 229 for 369, 62.1 completion percentage, 2,521 yards, 22 touchdowns, 7 picks. He was marginally better than he was in 2021. But that's not a top five quarter. Like He was a top five player coming out of high school. This is not a top five player production-wise. He stunk. Flat out. He transfers to Oregon State. And last year goes 180 for 315, 57.1% completion, 26-38 passing, 21 touchdowns, 7 picks. They went 8-4. and four. 
They went eight and four. Like this is the guy that Mike Norvell decided was his answer at quarterback. Eight and four. Got drop kicked by Oregon. Lost to Washington. That was a close game. Lost to Arizona. Lost to Washington State. Best game he had all year, 284 yards against San Diego State, and that was completing 46.7% of his passes in terms of yardage. Hit a game for 275 against Cal, 266. This is not an elite quarterback. This is not someone you put your you that you entrust with a one-year stopgap experience. He's not Cam Ward, who went to Miami, who is a dynamic athlete. And I don't know that Cam Moore will be the answer for the Hurricanes, but Miami's got way more talent on offense than Florida State does this year, especially at quarterback and running back with the addition of Damian Martinez as well, who's a monster of a running back, who went to Oregon State with DJ Uyunglele. But end of the day, you're not sitting here saying I'm going to decide that I'm not going to try to develop my quarterback that I recruited. And that's where I get frustrated with these coaches today. The guy you recruited, the guy you recruited, Mike Norvell, Brock Glenn, played in a bowl game against Georgia last year, got the shit kicked out of him because there was no one there to block for him. He had no weapons to throw the ball to. They were missing everybody. So now he's a red shirt freshman. I don't know if he'd be ready to play this year. I don't know how good he might be. I have no idea. What should have happened is they should have ensured Tate ensured that Tate Rodmaker didn't leave the team. Because that was part of the issue. Is he got hurt too. Right? And so he wasn't the starter for the bowl game. Whereas if he had been healthy, he might have started. He probably would have started. He transfers to Southern Miss. He's a junior. That was your starting quarterback. But you fucked up and didn't find a way to keep him. Because maybe probably the writing was on the wall that you didn't believe in him. But at the end of the day, DJ Uyunglele was your answer. Man goes 19 for 27 for 193 yards, 70% completion rate. He didn't throw a touchdown, didn't throw a pick. He didn't make any mistakes. He damn sure didn't do anything to help them win. They had less than 300 yards of offense. They had absolutely no running game, which is because DG Uyunglele has is no threat downfield. He's not a threat downfield. Their longest play from scrimmage from passing was 21 yards. Most of his passes were within five yards of the line of scrimmage. If I'm putting my future, my season on the line for a quarterback, he better be able to make some fucking passes. I think DJ Uyunglele Uy- sucks. He's not a pro. So why exactly did you bring him over here? He's not a dynamic athlete. He doesn't have some magnificent arm. We saw him play at Clemson enough to know this. He couldn't win at Oregon State. They went eight and four. He's going to come to Florida State now and be all of a sudden be world, a world savior. And after he couldn't do shit at Clemson, which had more talent than Florida State has right now. I'll tell you right now, Mike Norvell, I, I'm, I, I think he's a good coach. I think he made a major mistake here. And I have a feeling that this kid brought Glenn by some point in this season will be the starting quarterback. Because I don't think that this season has survived very long with DJ Uyunglele at quarterback. I just don't see it. And then I have people on my Facebook page telling me, oh, the defense blew it. The defense gave up 336 yards. Yeah, they could not get off the field in the final drive. It was 21-21. If you're a good quarterback, sorry, Georgia Tech's not holding you to 21 points. And if you hold Georgia Tech to 190 rushing, which Georgia Tech is known for running the damn ball, that's actually usually considered a win. Because Georgia Tech has a tendency to run for 300 yards on people on the ground. So if you hold them to under 200, it wasn't a bad day. 
That was due for 140 and change. So why in the world would people be saying, oh, it, well, it's just one game. That's not, see, that's the funny part is all those folks on my page, if Miami, when, if Miami loses on Saturday to Florida or if Florida loses to Miami, those will be the same people saying, oh, Miami sucks or Florida sucks because that's just what they do. And that's fine. I expect it. And if Miami was to lose to Florida as a favorite at UF, with way more talent than the Florida Gators have, because most people don't pick the Gators to win more than three or four games this season. I'll sit here and say it's a massive implosion by Miami because I expect Miami to win this game. How can FSU fans sit here with a straight face and sit here and tell me they didn't expect to beat Georgia Tech by double digits? Their next game is versus Boston College, and they got Memphis, and they got Cal. They got four, three more, three straight home games. So maybe they can shape it up for those three and win all three because they're at home. And none of these teams are world world beaters, although Memphis typically can score points. Then they go to SMU with Rhett Lashley. That's going to be a tough-ass game for them. Rhett Lashley is a great offensive coach. Then they host Clemson. They go, to, they go to Duke. They come to Miami October 26th. I'll be at that game. Host UNC. They got to go to Notre Dame, who's ranked seventh right now. Don't know how good Notre Dame is, but they are ranked seventh at this moment. Rankings right now don't mean shit for the most part. Then they have a podunk in Charleston Southern November 23rd before they finish at home against Florida. I'm telling you right now, FSU's looking at a seven and six, seven, six, seven and six. Is it they play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? They play 12 games. They're looking at a six and six, seven and five record. I don't see FSU winning more than seven games. If you can't beat Georgia Tech, you ain't winning seven games, more than seven games. No chance. No chance. There's no big playability on this on this team. The line seems to have a bit of a problem. Couldn't run the ball. And the QB is not trusted. He can't be trusted. I'm not going to sit here and blow the guy up and say that he's, well, yeah, I just did. He's terrible. <laughs> he's terrible. He's terrible. And I think by, if they lose one of these next three at home versus BC, Memphis, or Cal, Brock Lynn's the quarterback. FSU fans will lose their minds in Tallahassee. They'll be screaming to the heavens, especially if it's because DJ Uyungale can't make plays. That's the reality. If he can't make plays, if they're losing because their defense isn't playing well, then he may have an out. But if it's because the quarterback play is bad, because 24 points to Georgia Tech, they should win that game. FSU should win that game. FSU should win that game. FSU gave up 331 yards a game per game on offense last on def defensively last year. So they only give five more yards. The difference last year is they had average over 400 yards on offense. This, this game against Tech, they only had 291 yards of offense, something like that. They had the ball longer than, than Tech. They had more first downs, but they had 100 and – they had like 40, 50 less yards than Tech. They didn't turn it over, so there are no catastrophic mistakes. This is just a matter of you can't – you can't – um the word you can't um execute your offense and probably in large part because you don't trust your quarterback nothing downfield i think fsu's in, in for a long ass season i think that the decision that norvell made if he doesn't fix it soon enough maybe i'm wrong man but i don't see it you can't lose the georgia tech and sit here and look me in the face with a leading rusher of 38 yards in uh Roy Dell Williams, and sit here and tell me that this team is a threat. People asking if they're a playoff. Man, this team isn't going any playoff. Are you crazy? Are you fucking crazy? They're not going to the playoffs. This team with this guy at quarterback? The ACC this year is as open as it's ever been. I don't know who's going to the playoff from the ACC as the rep for the ACC and who's going to win the ACC. But I can tell you who it won't be. It won't be Florida State. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment.
Love to hear people have to say college football's here, baby. We're gonna be looking at a bunch of games this weekend, including Colorado, North Dakota State. Let's see if Coach Prime can get them a win against a tough, tough FCS school. Miami versus Florida. LSU USC. And there's one more game that we're looking at this week. I can't remember which game it is, but there's one more. We got four games that we're gonna be really paying attention, very close attention to. So before, be sure to check out these videos and leave a comment because I love me. I love college football. College football to me is the most fun thing to watch in terms of the experience, the excitement, the environment. There's nothing better than tailgating at a school like Florida State, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, any one of these big time college programs that are in college towns. Tailgating at those schools, the excitement, the environment, the energy, the passion, unmatched by anything in American sports. Anyhow, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Come on now.